What's going on, Port fans? Welcome back to another video on the channel. Today, we're going to talk about Junior Rioli. Willie Rioli, as he's known as well, but obviously with the respect of our recent passings in the family, Junior Rioli at this current stage. Looking forward to seeing what he can do for Port Adelaide, and that's what we're going to be talking about today in the video, uh, what he can bring to the Port Adelaide Football Club in 2023 and beyond. Part of the mega deal, as I mentioned in the previous video about Jason Horn Francis, so make sure you jump on that as well if you haven't seen that one talking about what he can bring to the Port Adelaide Football Footy Club as well. So let's get straight into this and talk about Junior Rioli and what he can do for Port Adelaide in 2023 and beyond. Waterman soccer's it on and the cross was good to Rioli. The lovely step once, twice. You can't lay a finger on him. Willie Rioli. Junior Rioli joining Port Adelaide for the uh, first time. He's been to South Australia before playing with um, Glenelg, I think it was, before he was drafted to West Coast. In 2018, made his debut in round two, 2018 as well. A very solid servant of the West Coast Footy Club. We know of the drama that has he's had in the last couple of years. I'm not going to touch into too much of that, but I definitely can see uh, what Port Adelaide can do to help that situation for him in mentally and also physically um, in, in a new change of scenery and attitudes. So we'll get into that in a minute, but I'll start with the key components of it. Obviously, part of the mega deal, as I keep mentioning in these videos, um, a four-year deal, so that will take him to uh, 2027. Um, he's going to be part of that. As a 27-year-old, he's joining the footy club. He's a small forward. If you haven't noticed him before, played 51 games, kicked 60 goals for the West Coast Eagles. So uh, had kicked 13 goals or 14 goals in 13 games in 2022. Uh, uh, had a few niggling injuries across the year. Obviously missed two years prior to that as well, 2020 and 2021 with some, uh, some charges that were laid against him and suspended from the game in 2019. Uh, also had a few injuries as well, I'm pretty sure. So uh, not the greatest start to his career. But 2018, in his first year, everything was perfect. He won a premiership with West Coast and joins former teammate at West Coast, now to become current teammate, Scott Lysette, who also won a premiership at West Coast there as well. So a lot of links between Rioli and Port Adelaide, as you can tell. Uh, the premiership play is a really key component for us because I think if we can find um, any experience possible in these areas to bring to the footy club, it will help us get to that massive stage, which hopefully can be in 2023. What does he bring to Port? He strengthens our forward line craft and um, you know around that half forward line under the pack type operator that we knew Robbie Gray and, and Stevie Motlop were capable of doing. Um, definitely going to be helping in that aspect and building that depth and that craft, because you're obviously going to be losing that with Robbie Gray. Um, obviously, he we lost him as well with uh, midfield depth as well. But we're losing losing that craft that uh, at the bottom of the pack. You know the ones that really sniff out the goals that you half want to take as a chance, and and the ability to actually get a small forward to kick a goal. We've struggled with this aspect of having a small forward. Fantasia can't get on the park, and and you know small forwards such as. Rosie and Butters are moving into the midfield now, which isn't giving us much opportunity to play anyone else. McKenzie's playing um, has shown a little bit here and there, especially in the second half of 2022. He was, I think, really impressive, but not enough to sh have faith in he's going to have the shoulder responsibility of this position. Pow Pepper and Lockie Jones are your defensive forwards now with, with defensive pressure and pace and tackling, but they're not goal craft. Pow Pepper has a little bit, but you don't have that pure small forward that's going to be able to take those half opportunities on the boundary line or underneath a contest, snap on goal, quick reaction time and, and everything in between. And Rioli has that. He has that aspect with him. He, he, we've seen crafty goals from him prior to this and his ability to get those chances that we normally wouldn't take is going to add two to three goals to our scorecard. We know we have Todd Marshall on the lead. We have Charlie Dixon in the air to create a contest. Finlayson, Finlayson the same to complement both sides of being a tall forward. So... That's going to help Rioli settle in quite nicely. Um, and if, if Fantasia can get on the park, then that's going to create a very, very dangerous small forward group with Rioli a part of it. Well, I was a little bit sceptical about getting Rioli, and I was kind of hoping that we didn't come out of this trade period having just him as a target because we talked on aggressive nature. We had a big big dog status about us coming into the trade period, and obviously we've come out with some massive gets, which is absolutely fantastic. I do think that having Rioli is a positive more than a negative. And now I know a lot of people won't agree with it as a priority, but it, it never hurts to go and get these types of players on a four-year deal. He's going to have a change of scenery and we know the the baggage he's bringing with him. Um, but then again, a player gets a second opportunity. I think we've been quite successful with that. We saw glimpses with Motlop 
never really came into fruition, but he helped us. I thought he helped us in key finals moments against Geelong in those two uh, qualifying finals. You know, we had Rockliffe who didn't quite get his mojo, but definitely was there or thereabouts in that 2020 year when um, we were capable. Jack Watts obviously didn't work out um, too well, but I think we've had that these opportunities to bring in these players and, and really create second chances and, and they've taken. Ali really is an exceptional opportunity, uh, example as well. So, it, they hit, they can be hit and miss, and I'm not going to be shying away from that. I'm not going to try and pump up the tyres too much, but it's definitely what can he bring to Port Adelaide more so than what he's not going to bring. Um, and I know he's going to leave the baggage at the airport and bring a fresh face, a fresh attitude, and a fresh change of scenery, which is going to help him mentally uh, be with his family, a, a change of club, a change of culture, and you know, something that's going to really help him develop into a, a, a good quality um, footballer with application to his craft, and you know we we might see these as positives, we might see these as negatives, and uh, that's each to their own. But I think with Rioli, it brings a positive aspect. He might not play every game in, in the best twenty-two, or we might have an injury-riddled year, and he might absolutely star. So it gives opportunities as well, though, to not have as much reliance on Power Pepper, Lockie Jones, Boak, who's going to be playing a little bit more mid uh, forward time. I think on the half forward line. Um, next year, Rosie Butters gets more midfield time in the middle. Um, we 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 have op- uh, different you know, structures we can have down forward. Um, you know those wet weather games as well. We're going to have a little bit more craft there and a little bit more forward nature. And, and his brain's going to be a little bit uh, more reliable as such as as say as a you know as a midfielder playing down forward. So. Um, it gives midfielders more chance of a rest on the bench than they do just down forward. Um, and I think overall, it, it's a winning trade in a sense that West Coast got what they didn't ask for, which was like a Houston, a Butters, or Georgie Artis, or anything they inquired about, which was quite bizarre. But in the end, we sort of got him for a late second round pick. Like it's a future pick, I think we pretty much used, which in hindsight is a great deal for Rioli, who um, I think, you know, can give us something to smile about in, in 2023. And, you know, the start that every time someone brings in a Rioli, they win a premiership. Um, 2017 was Rioli. 2018 was Rioli. Just never know. So um, I will take that start to the grave if he wins us a flag. So, But in all seriousness, it's great to have uh, Junior Rioli to the club. And I think uh, overall, it would be great to see what he can do. And I'll back him in. Um, and, and most importantly, I think I'm going to ask the question, as I've asked in all of these videos so far, is what number will he wear? I'm going to back him in to wear Carl Amon's 15. I think um, there's not going to be any heavy draft picks coming in in terms of you know higher draft picks. I mean, not heavy. It's not like we're hiring WWE wrestlers here or something. But um, I think 15. So you're going to have Horn Francis at 6 and uh, Junior Rioli at 15. That's my pick so far. Who else is to come? We'll find out. Thank you for watching, Port fans. Uh, chime in in the comments below your thoughts on Junior Rioli and what he'll bring to Port Adelaide, what you think of this mega deal as well. Check out the mega deal uh, video that came out on Monday, the Horn Francis video that came out yesterday, the Junior Rioli, obviously, you're watching now, and whoever else at this stage, I uh, don't know who else has joined the club, so we'll see what happens from then on. But my name's Anthony. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you need for plenty more Port Adelaide and AFL content leading into 2023. And as always, can't Junior Rioli.